What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 59 of the AFKR podcast. I am your host, Jay Lysium, and today we have Big Boy Eddie. Hey, guys. And we have Stevie Ray. Hello, everyone. So, what's up, guys? What have you guys been up to this past week, Eddie? Not much. Just went to, uh, I was near town in San Antonio in Austin doing some stuff for work, and I visited you guys. Well, you visited me. You and Nick. Yeah. yeah. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it was fun. We just we just what we, we didn't do much. We just went to go eat, hanged out, watched the scary spoopy movie. Malignant. And I passed out. And then he passed out. Yeah. Did you like that movie? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean I wanted it to be spooky spooky, but it wasn't really spooky, you know? Yeah, it, it was it's more of a thriller than a scary like yeah. keep you up at night type movie. That was a pretty cool, uh unique movie yeah it was honestly because like when you when you hear of james wan you think of like paranormal like super like yeah. um it, like ghosts and demons and stuff like that but like this one wasn't really about that it was just like uh i would say a medical condition honestly. well i mean uh, not necessarily like i mean it's still i think james wan to me i associate james wan with like with like story-based thriller horror films and that's what this was right he made a story or there's there's a story uh that's very well told throughout the whole movie like i i thought that the i thought that the way like because when you think of when you typically think of horror tropes it's like it's like oh just very very one line one direction stories versus like i, I thought malignant was was very cool in that like they brought up like they did some foreshadowing they did some they did like they did a bunch of things and then they collected all the dots by the end of it yeah yeah to me it seems like very origin story like if it's gonna be like some kind of superhero i mean just because of the fact the way it ends it, it just it reminded me of the whole like m night Shyamala, like um like their movie like um what's it called mr unbreakable and miss Do mr glass and uh... oh yeah 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 i i I still haven't seen Glass. I need to watch that one, but uh, I forget what the original one was called. Um, but yeah, it was like a trilogy, technically. Yeah, I think the first one was Unbreakable because it had Bruce Split. Willis. Split was the second one. Split was the second one, and then it was Glass. Movie. Glass was the third one. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I feel like it's... This show kind of gave me that kind of vibe, especially Glass, or not Glass, but um, Split. It gave me Split um, yeah, vibe. I see that, yeah. Well, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it. I just wish it was more paranormal. That's that's my only thing I would take away for that. Yeah. Oh, cool. How about you, see? What have you been up to this past week? I mean, I've been up to, like, I mean, not nothing too much, I guess. So, since the last time we talked, which was last Wednesday, uh, I, I've been, uh, I start, I picked up New World. So I, I think I said last week on the pod I was gonna pick up New World, I did it, and it's pretty addicting. Not gonna yeah, lie, it is. Uh, I'm having a I'm having a good time, you know. And it's like so this is technically the first MMO that I've like stuck with, I guess you could say, for more than a couple days. I tried WoW Classic uh, when that when when that wave came around, and I was just like, eh, this isn't for me. But so a lot of my clanmates have been playing New World, and so I, I picked it up um, to start playing it. And yeah, like I, I like all it, it's. I like the graphics. Like I mean, they're cool. You know, they're not like a, a super HD 4K, but I like I like the environment. I guess I could say, I like I like running around in the world. You know, and there's a lot of running. I'll say that. Uh, I'll yeah, never... that's one thing I don't like. They need like some kind of mount to make it cheaper, to freaking fast travel. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I don't know. I I'm so far I haven't run out of fast travel materials. So as so for now, I, I feel like late game it's going to be an issue because you use that same material for a lot of your crafting. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, like early game. So I'm level 25 now after like a week. Uh, the last five levels from level 20 to 25 were actually a lot slower. 
and I hear that as you keep progressing, it gets slower and like it, it takes longer and longer to level up. So that's a good thing. What, what really helps me is doing the board quests. Yeah, Are the community ones or yeah, the, the faction ones? ones? Uh, the community ones. Yeah. Uh, because if you just collect a lot of materials, a lot of the time you can just instantly finish the quests. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I didn't do any of those. I just, mo I did like all of the side quests. What's really cool is that you can just like get lost, just traveling back and forth to places. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, like I, like I was saying before, like there's a lot of running. So I, I have found this like to be the perfect uh, game to play while I watch anime. So <laughs> it's like, I'll be playing new world and then I'll have some, some anime on the side like I'll like what so like while I'm running because it has auto run right I'll be running from like town to town and it's like oh, I'll just watch anime for a bit <laughs> you know? because it's a lot you know and like I said I wasn't too used to that because um I guess technically the only MMO I've ever played is kind of like is more like Destiny and in Destiny um the map sizes are way smaller and you have your mount <laughs> which is your sparrow um to to get from place to place but yeah um i'm i'm enjoying uh right now my build uh i'm doing warhammer and uh the hatchet it's pretty cool especially yeah, early I game to ask. i am doing the ice gauntlet and the fire staff ice gauntlet and fire see i haven't gotten into any of that yet so like i i think i plan to especially once once i start getting like higher level gear like I, I heard that Warhammer and Hatchet are good early game, especially for me. Like I end up playing a lot of solo, mm -hmm. um, so like Hatchet is really cool because you can get a self heal, and um, with with the Berserk uh, special, and then also uh, the Warhammer has special special ability or healing abilities with its crowd control as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, I, I really one like thing it. I've noticed two of the skill trees. Usually, the left one is damage, and the right one is support or defensive. Yeah, and I like the fact that, like, like early game, you can pretty much respect however you want. Mm -hmm. A lot of the big MMO uh, websites are getting into it too, like Icy Vein. Um, so they have like leveling and um, build guides that I've been following for. So for me, like as a new player. Uh, very new to the genre. It's really it's really helpful um, It's like okay, like show me the optimal build or show me why and like they have some good text and flavor text into like Why why or what like how to play with this build and like why you should use this build Of course lots of youtubers out there now doing the same So yeah, I mean it, but it's been fun just discovering stuff right now Like the probably the most fun quest line that I'm running on is uh, the fishing quest line which is funny like because it just i like it simply because it it just takes you everywhere and so it's yeah. like you you pick up the quest talk to a fisherman go fish for a thing and then you go to another fisherman like in another town like uh and then do what he wants and then go to another fisherman so you're just like talking to all these different fisher fisher people and you're you're learning how to fish um and then also and i hear i heard at the end of the quest you get like a really awesome fishing pole so, which is why I'm continuing down it. You might have to so, start that up again then. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, like I learned about hotspots. I fucking found two treasure chests in a hotspot. I've only found one. Uh, and and in the treasure chest, I had I got fucking platinum and gold bars. Oh shit! Like, shape. like, dude, like I was like, what? Like, I have all these <laughs> end game fucking materials, like I can fucking use for for armor and shit later. I haven't done any crafting. It was actually kind of funny because I've just been doing a lot of collecting so far. And it was even weirder is that I hadn't even been doing that um, until I got to this quest line that said, oh, you need to be 30 level 30 harvesting to complete this quest. And it was part of the main quest line. So so like I just started well, I was like, well, is I guess I got to start harvesting. Is this after the expedition or before? Before. I don't remember that. I mean, to was, be fair, uh, I freaking love harvesting, so I probably had it high enough and just didn't notice. Yeah, it was. It's the one where you have to get the river crests, um, and you have to get river crests and then uh, the petals. You have to get those two things, and but the river crests you can only pick up from from level thirty harvesting. 
but yeah, I, I needed it. So I was like, well, fuck, I guess I gotta do that. And then also like, I've been getting into like, just chopping trees and shit. So it's yeah, like, oh, I see a tree. I just, I see a bunch of trees and I just go to chop it, you know, just waste some time doing that. Um, but I had like all this material and I've been saving the materials. Like, uh, so I spawned that first light and, um, and I had all my materials in first light and then, and then, um, uh, we moved over to Everfall when I, once I finally started leveling, I moved over to Everfall and there's not really an easy way to transfer your stuff from one town to another. So, uh, but I finally went back and picked up all my stuff and then I transferred it over, uh, once I got like fast traveling and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I noticed is that I had, I had enough to like start making all of the low level materials for my trade skills. And I went from like zero to 50 on yeah. all of my trade skills, just it's by turning in all the materials I collected. <laughs> and it just takes too long. And like, I wanted to focus on making house potions because they sell for a lot and they're really handy. But it takes forever just to make a level uh, common or level two health potions because you need like petals or like level 30 plants. And if you want to do hundreds, you're going to need to freaking gather hundreds of them instead of like wow. the briars and all that where you just can instantly spam. But yeah, uh, I did my first expedition. Um, I, it, I mean, I was I played the DPS sort of like <laughs> I, just, I felt like I was being carried by my by my clanmates. They were just healing me up the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it was cool. We need one more person since it's only two of us. Oh, OK, then, yeah, maybe I'll join you guys. Well, but maybe maybe once server transfers come yeah. in, you guys can join me <laughs> and then we can do that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. I got some cool gear out of it. Um, I, I don't I don't think I kept any of it because it's not any of the 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 weapons that I'm using right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty fun. Like I said, I, I, I enjoy it and I will continue to play it because um, it's definitely something like when I'm not playing Destiny, this is definitely something that I can time waste on and kind of like chill out like uh it's also very pvp heavy as well there's like like i didn't realize how many people are so in the pvp on this stuff you don't have you don't have to opt in if you don't want to which, which at this time i'm i haven't been opting in but you can do that and i know that's an option but but i just having fun just you know just just kicking back and doing all the PVE stuff, you know, collect my wood, you know, you like freaking finish all the quests. I haven't bought a house yet. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen a need to. So, but I do want to put a dog in front of it. So like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, how do you get a dog? It's from the expedition, right? At, at the expedition, there's a dog outside that you can pet and then mm -hmm. he gives you a quest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know much about New World, so I can't chime in. I I don't think I'm. It's that game's for me, because I ha, like I said previously, I have a very addictive personality, so I'm just gonna want to play all the time. So I don't think I'm gonna be playing that game anytime soon. I just I just enjoy that it's forty bucks, and I don't have to put any more money in. You know, like <laughs> like there's cosmetics. So far, I, I mean, I mean, if I get the number of hours that I've gotten. Uh, like I've, i feel like i've already gotten 40 buck 40 hours out of it like probably yeah so I've, sure. I've definitely gotten my money back so i mean uh it's definitely a time sink but also like what else am i playing right now you know well i'll tell you what i'm playing I'm playing more destiny um <laughs> destiny um festival of the lost it's their october event that they do every year nothing too crazy is new um i mean they changed the activity it used to be a haunted forest activity now it's um i don't remember exactly what it's called but there's like it's like you have to defeat these headless like monsters or whatever they have these big giant pumpkin heads which look pretty cool um but yeah you just defeat them and then it's just you collect candy and you get you could potentially get weapons and other decorative stuff um, they also released these dinosaur ornaments, which are really cool. Uh, I'll definitely show you the next time I play, or if you catch me streaming, you can check out mine. Um, I, I went for like this Power Rangers type deal. Uh, I did like the the red the Red Ranger and the the Blue Ranger, kind of like their Zords with my dragons. So it's pretty cool. 
or with my dinosaurs. But yeah, uh, it's it's like they didn't really add anything new other than this event. Probably gonna last for like a, it lasts for about a month. Uh, I'll definitely grind it out and try to do some do some things in that. Um, uh, oh yeah, also I did uh, do Trials of Osiris again last week. Went flawless with my buddies. We finally did what's called a confidence card, which is uh, you get there's there's uh, you only get you can only lose one time. So we won seven in a row, uh, and and we got double the loot at the end. So we did it for a triumph and. It worked out pretty good. We we're, were actually really surprised. It's actually the fastest flawless run we've ever done. We did it in like 35 minutes. I was, it was like ridiculous, but uh, it was very stressful towards the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to see George get into Destiny <laughs> PvP. I, I want, I want, like, cause I, I think it would be very cool to watch, but I think, I think you're, you're still all about that Valorant life. Yeah. I mean, I do really like Valo, but I mean, it slowed, I slow down a lot playing because I got plat and I feel like there's no more goal for me there. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably gonna try Destiny. It's like the only reason I don't want to play Destiny PvP is because like that game, like guns actually matter. Like you have to like grind for the specific gun or like, um, I don't know, I guess like for like sheriffs or pistols or whatever, yeah. like, like, um, they're really strong and I don't have that many. So like, I just have to continue grinding until. I get the right gun and load out and then also yeah. armor armor is also really you have to be yeah. unique armor too <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous like after playing for so long i feel like i can finally like be good i guess you know like i have good armor like you know with the high stats that you need you just don't you one you don't learn that just by playing and like they don't de they definitely don't teach you and like if you're just playing like normal like just casually you would never know like like oh like this guy's like kicking my ass like why is he kicking my ass so hard yeah and it's like there's no way for you to know unless like you just inherently know it's like oh he's got better gear than i do you know so that that does suck i i agree with that but yeah um uh, i know that the halloween event just started for overwatch as well yeah. Uh, there's some. There's a couple skins in there that I want to get, so I might. I might hit you up. Maybe we'll play some Overwatch. Yeah. I yeah. mean, as I guess for me, I've been playing more Overwatch lately. I just want to go back to the old grind, like when I used to sh play the shit ton out of Overwatch, right? Um, I want to try to do that master grind because I used to be masters, and I'm probably might stream it more often. Um, but like the only thing about Overwatch is that I get so burnt out in Overwatch. Compared to other games, like I don't get burnt out in Valo or even League or any other game, I don't get burnt out. But in Valo or in Overwatch, I play like maybe three or four or five games. Like I done. get burnt out. Like I'm just like, oh fuck, I just need to take a break. I, like, I think, I think the reasoning behind that is just because there's so much happening every game that you have to track. You know, like Valorant, same deal, but there's breaks between rounds. You know, so it's like. You go, you go like you, you, you get built up and then it's like, it's like, oh, okay. Relax, relax a little bit. Okay. Reset, yeah. reset. Who's Fraba, you know, but like, because Overwatch games are like 15 minutes long, you know, like maybe, maybe a little bit less, maybe more, but most of the time I felt like average that are about 15 minutes long and like you're playing, you're playing your hardest the whole fucking time, you know? Yeah. And, and it's just like and you have to like you die you gotta get back out there's like oh i got like you you never have a chance to breathe you know it's like yeah. i gotta run i gotta run back to the team i gotta get back to the team you know <laughs> so it, it's tough and it's like win or lose you know it's not like uh there's no participation trophy if you if you win you get elo if you lose you don't get elo you lose elo you lose you know? elo, yeah <laughs> so it, it's tough man i I've definitely been on that grind before where I'm just, I'm just like trying to win. And like, I've definitely been there where like, I'm just slumped in my chair with my eyes glazed. Like I've been doing this for five hours and I've, and I've gone up zero ELO. Like, Cause it's all 50 50. Yeah. Like, like they, they intentionally designed the game to be a 50 50 game where they want, they want you to win one, lose one, win one, lose one. When you're at your intended ELO, you know? So if you're trying to get better and you're trying to like grind, it's like, it, it's hard, it's hard to do unless 
you somehow like make a breakthrough at least I, I that's the way i feel yeah and like another thing they did which like in, i guess encourages people to play more is that every role has its own rank now so like if you you could be like 2500 which is gold for dps but you could be masters in tank or or masters or grandmasters in healing you know each role has its own rank and on top of that there's a separate rank called open queue and basically that has a rank itself right it's its own ecosystem for rank oh, it has its own rank now mm -hmm. i didn't know that so like um if open queues basically it goes it reverts to original overwatch where you could because like currently the state of overwatch there's like lock-in so there's only two dps two tanks and two healers back then you could be wherever the fuck you wanted right you could be six tanks or six healers or six dps but then that costs the game to be really toxic we were like oh we're throwing blah blah right um so that's that's why um in order to combat that blizzard decided to do the the roll queue or whatever and um i don't know I, honestly i don't know how i feel about it still now because like yeah. i still like I, open queue honestly like I, I like it way more i i just hate the long ass queues for dps yeah like having to wait 10 minutes to play a game Everybody it's, wants to be DPS. Yeah, everybody wants to be DPS, but it's like, and, and I get it. It's like, well, it's like, well, if you want to play DPS, you better be prepared to wait. It's like, that's that's not cool. Like, I wanna I wanna play a tactical shooter. You know, like if I, it, so that's that's why a lot of people I feel like go play Valorant. You know, they get they get to shoot in Valorant, and it's right away because <laughs> they don't have to worry about the other roles. You know. And, and then and then it gets even more toxic too because the people who don't queue for DPS they queue for other roles and then they shit on the DPS because they're like man if I was DPS right now like I would like I would have been doing this and that is because they're so frustrated that they didn't get to play DPS. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, it is frustrating. Overwatch, yeah. definitely. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you, do you think that they're gonna have any philosophy changes in Overwatch 2, or do you think it's gonna be a lot of, more of the same? It's gonna be more more of the same, honestly. Um, it's just the only thing that's different is just only one tank. So yeah. maybe the queue time for tank will be longer. I don't know since it's just one well, tank. Maybe the I, I'm I'm th I think the overall queue times will be faster because it's less people you know, that you have to search for. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to. Like, um, I saw a gameplay for Overwatch 2, right? And I saw a clip where XQC, who used to be a pro for Overwatch, um, was reacting, and he was just like, it's the same game! What the fuck? It's the same game! And I was like, oh, I mean, he's not wrong. It looks exactly the same. It just Isn't looks like... Is that what like... said, though? Well, it was going to be the exact same game, just, just uh, little tweaks here and there? Well, I mean, the way that they showcased it the first time, it actually looked kind of different, because, like, each hero had its own fucking branch tree, like a uh, to level up and stuff like that. And oh, okay. it, it could be unique and every hero has a passive. And um DPS was gonna be more of like a supporting and supporting gonna be more DPS and tank was gonna be more like what like DPS or like everything was like flip flop, like change. But when I saw the gameplay, I was just like, Oh, this looks like the same thing. Like, maybe I, cause like I don't get to see like the, the branches they went through because like you know how in old League of Legends, you, you oh actually the current the League of Legends, the ruins, yeah exactly. So I'm assuming that's what uh, Overwatch was gonna do, or they're in, still trying Matthew. to do. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do, but they didn't showcase that. Uh, well, at least in the clips I saw. And um, yeah, I don't know. It just looks like it. Uh, it looks like the same game, but with worse graphics. Like, <laughs> well, like, and, like it's weird because like is I, it like more cartoony or what? It's not more cartoony. It's just like, you it know, the portraits. It looks more CGI to me. Yeah, it looks more CGI, and like the little portraits, they look they look downgraded. Like, I don't know. Like that's how I saw it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so excited for it. I still have my fingers crossed. My hopes are high. But <sighs> they call me a dreamer for a reason, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, um, I've been playing. Um, Hearthstone. Um, originally, I started playing Hearthstone with just the Battlefield, just to, but like the thing with oh, Hearthstone is that when you start playing one of their game types, you're just like, oh, I should try the other one. So I started playing. I went back to standard. Oh, I went back to regular Hearthstone, just playing the game, 
and I got to platinum with just uh, this deck that it's only one card in the deck but what it does is basically it randomizes and it makes like a collection of different decks so yeah I mean yeah it's a it's a weird deck but like I I, I climbed from all the way from bronze to platinum and I'm trying to get um legendary with it but it's really hard because like every time you play it's a different deck like it's it's weird and yeah. then recently um this new game type came out which is called uh, mercenaries and mm -hmm. that game like that game type is pretty cool but i'm still trying to understand it but um i don't know it's it's more so the same thing but like instead of like um collecting different cards you collect specific cards and then you level them up if that makes sense yeah yeah i heard it's like a rpg type thing yeah we're like yeah like you level up and then you but you like you use the same cards and then is it is it pvp or is it or is it ai that you play there, against there's both options you could get pvp or ai but i feel okay. like i haven't tried the the pvp yet i've only done ai I feel like if you play against PvP, you have to level up your cards in order to play. Because the max yeah. level for each card is 30. And mm -hmm. you start off with level 1. And the way that you level them up is that you pick 5 cards before you go on an expedition. like, And um, they, they're in your deck. And if they die while you're doing the expedition, um, they can't res or you can't use them anymore for the rest of the expedition. So mm -hmm. they don't get any XP. Yeah, so like you have to keep them safe. Well, I mean, they do get some XP, but not as much as if they're like on the field and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And each time you, every time you um, start an expedition or you start fighting the expedition, you can only use three cards. Like, it's really complex. I feel like I should just stream it on Sunday because I'm going to be streaming on Sunday. I'm going to stream Mercenaries. It's it's a unique game type. Yeah. But, um. But, so is it like, do you have like a player level too, like on top of your card levels? It's like that's that's I don't I don't see how they could mat properly match make you, like other than other than just pairing you with anybody. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't played against the PvP thing because like it's weird because like the way that they're doing it is that every time you're you have like a campsite right, and every time you go to the campsite, you could upgrade the your like facilities, but that costs coins. So like. Like, if you don't have coins, then you're pretty much fucked. You can't upgrade anything. And you'll be stuck at the base level. But fortunately enough, like, I don't really use my coins, so I was able to upgrade my camp. And one... But I haven't upgraded one specific one, which is PvP. It costs 100 coins to unlock PvP. And, um... I haven't, I, I haven't unlocked it because I was just like, I don't, I'm not interested in PvP right now. I just want to play... Yeah. Play just, like, AI. But, yeah. It's, it's yeah, unique. I can see it working is, like... It's like maybe you're all the same level and you're just playing with the cards, but I don't know. It's interesting yeah. though. I want to see more of it. Yeah, because like there is like a like a regular version and there is an epic version. So at, like just like in regular Hearthstone, when you're playing against AI, there's like a normal fight and then there's a a hardcore version of that fight. So like right now, I finished the. There's like at least I think there's four different expeditions, and each of those expeditions have like seventeen like like i don't know there's like there's like there's a lot of content basically and once you beat it in regular you have to beat it in hardcore and then yeah okay it's really fun though it's addicting because it's a card game yeah, yeah. but i will stream yeah. it i will stream it. eddie what else have you been up to not much just been playing new world i noticed that the xbox game pass added more games and i tried out scarlet nexus it's actually pretty cool it's a button oh, nice. similar to like god of war or uh devil may cry those kind of games mm -hmm. and it's pretty fun i've been playing that i played with nick and uh, and everybody else uh craftopia which is literally a combination of minecraft breath of the wild <laughs> and some other games it's just like a, they just threw a bunch of games together and they made it work. Yeah, yeah. I think Nick was talking about it on the podcast last week a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Voice. The the other thing I've been up to is um, crypto stuff, which is NFTs. I've been really into NFTs lately, and like yesterday, <laughs> I got on a call with um, Eddie and I was just showing him all this stuff. And it, honestly, for me, it still doesn't make any sense. It's fucking art and art is abstract right so it's 
do you feel do you feel like you're gambling is that is that what it is like probably like, is that george like is that is that the high that you get from buying an nft is that like well maybe this turns into money but yeah like, essentially. I, I don't know I, I just don't understand it like to me like an nft is like i'm putting a bet on this that this is gonna it's gonna grow later uh, I, i've heard it also described as like just owning digital assets and that's yeah. what it really boils down to is just you're owning a digital asset and uh, but i i still don't know like what that actually means it's like it's like yes i bought this cup like i i own this now does it have value other than what was in it probably not <laughs> but is that is that an nft you know so basically nfts i don't know it's just like digital assets you 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 control you own it basically um it depends on the project honestly because like some projects actually have games tied to their nfts some of them um have um virtual land or whatever because like there's some nfts that you actually buy plots of land it's it's fucking crazy like what they do with some projects obviously some of them a lot of them are scams right but yeah i mean it's kind of like gambling but it's you own the digital currency or you own the digital art or whatever um the digital asset and um it's it's like going to an art gala and looking at art and you're just like oh that's worth a thousand dollars like what like how do you know that's worth a thousand dollars some rando person who drew this you know it's just, i don't know like i understand as much as nft as i actually understand like real art like because like like once again art's like perspective like it doesn't really have any true value it's just whatever you say it's worth you know what if you make a physical version of the nft do you own that i don't know and also like recently Brain like nerd. like maybe t <laughs> like in the summer they they sold the charlie bit my finger as an nft oh. Like yeah. the whole video for? for like, I think $900,000. Jesus Christ. I thought it was going to be more actually. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's crazy. Like there's money here. It's cr fucking insane. And the thing that's unique is that every coin has its own ecosystem. But like Bitcoin or Ethereum has its own NFT market and Solana has its own e uh, NFT market, etc. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's really complex. And like, I'm trying to grab and trying to understand it um but there's a lot well, if you learn it <laughs> come back and share with the class <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's weird you have to be on top of it like literally since the market never closes like you mm. just have to be like oh, okay this one's gonna go on sale at two o'clock in the morning over here and like yeah. the only thing i've seen is that like like i know i know wwe sold some nfts recently um like off of like moments like they they did a couple of them right they sold single nft they had a single nft auction which is like a, mo a, a moment from uh from past where like the moment where the undertaker throws mick foley off the cage they sold that as an nft but then they also sold trading cards like trading card style nfts yeah. where it's literally just like like an animated gif of like of like a logo you know and they that's that's sold as an nft as well so so there's like a variety of that and then i heard too that viacom is going to start selling like spongebob nfts very soon so i don't know it's just really it's weird crazy i don't under i don't fucking understand it like i don't understand it like is it because if it is like you described if it's like art and like and like we're saying like like the original nft creator is the artist is that what yeah. we're saying that's or, what they're yeah. saying yeah so like the the way that they essentially have value is the credibility of the artist and the community around the nft right so that essentially sets up the value and if there's no community and if the artist just dips then it goes that's how rug pulls that's what they call them um happen and then the project becomes zero and they just run away with millions of dollars yeah i see i but, see i see so yeah, like um, I have another friend who's been helping me try to understand it, and he was just telling me that uh, he's really bullish on the whole project NFTs and stuff like that. But he says to do your own research. Uh, but he says that potentially this could be the, there could be the new the newest Banksy or the newest whatever modern artist coming out from NFT. You know, so I mean that'd be pretty cool. Owning a Banksy like that's worth millions of dollars. 
I don't know why, but it's worth it, you know? True. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, I mean, you never know. And it's like, you have to kind of follow all the different projects. It's like, you are, if you are doing this, you have, I, I feel like you have to, it is going to be like dealing with art. Like you have to appreciate it as art and you have to understand like, like if you're trying to make money off of it, then yeah, you have to place your bets in you know in a weird way but if you're just trying to like own a piece of a digital asset um then then yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's crazy dude it's like it's like a google is like one of those like google picture for is a digital picture frame now a uh and a, like if i, if I like <laughs> is it is a digital picture frame different than an NFT picture frame, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like an NFT frame. Well, like, can I, mean, I go start selling NFT frames? That, that's a good <laughs> idea, honestly, because like, I will tell you that people buy NFTs, like little characters, little like monitos, and then they buy houses for those characters. <laughs> but there's no frames, like. <laughs> I don't know. That's a million dollar <laughs> idea right there. Because I'm like, because I, I, I'm thinking about like, what do you do with art? You display it, right? Yeah. Uh, like, like, where do you display an NFT today? Like, fucking, I don't know. There's a, there's know. actually a lot of marketplaces online. You just have to know the places. Oh, I'm talking about to display it. You're talking about. Like, oh, okay, a okay. Well, like, how actually, do, how do I, how do I display my my art that I've purchased? You know, to the world. Okay, so the reason why I really wanted to try NFTs was because I actually saw that in New York, they're actually putting NFT galleries. Like okay. people, so I was just like, whoa, this is actually potential, bro. Like I was just like, just imagine you put your, you you send them this NFT and they just put it in the gallery. Like that'd be pretty dope. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I own that, you know, in New York. And New York's known for its like, like a arts. picture arts. of a hot dog with like, <laughs> <laughs> There are hot dog pictures too. I know. I'm just like, I'm just trying to think like just, just being digital to me automatically gives it like a less of appeal than regular art. But yeah, I, know, I agree. Really weird. I agree. But I think uh, that's pretty cool. Like they're actually starting gala or galleries with, um, with NFTs. I'm just like, damn, like yeah. it's insane. Uh, how's your, how's your regular crypto stuff coming along? Um, it's coming along normal. Like I'm just mining and um i don't really trade day trade because it's right now everything's like popping off like everything's yeah. like going up i so, heard that um like she shiba inu is potentially gonna be uh gonna potentially start selling on robin hood uh am like i yeah like, if I Doge the is there, yeah. is like it's like they're pushing they're pushing for the penny like like it hasn't it hasn't reached the penny yet i think mm -hmm. No, it's like at 0 0.003, I think, right now. But I will say that so far the project is up 3 million percent. <laughs> Jesus. And if you wanted to get to like a penny, it would have to go up another 3 million percent. So, and if you wanted to go up to a dollar, it has to go up 5 million percent. And like, um,. I don't really believe in those. I think that's just it's just for sh the lols and shits and giggles, like e like the Inoshiba and also the the Dogecoin. But if people put money in it and they pump it, then like you can make easy money on it. You know, I'm I'm holding my fucking Doge, man. Like there are people, there's people on TikTok, like like look at this, look at this curve, look at the way, look, like, yeah, it's about they're to analysts blow up. basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, oh man. It's insane. I feel like so many people are gonna, like, like, once they start regulating crypto, so many people are gonna get fucking arrested. Like, for, for shit like that. Like, fucking, fucking, uh, pumping, pumping up crypto. Also, did you hear, uh, is it Nancy Pelosi? Like, she, she, uh, she, like, basically shot down the rumor that, that she's a fucking stock mastermind. <laughs> uh, have you heard, have you heard, have you heard that? that no, story? I haven't heard it. There's a there's this guy on TikTok who um who basically like like he uh he thinks that Nancy Pelosi is like a stock mastermind and, or or she that she knows inside information about certain stocks because of her position uh, because her husband happens to make moves based on based on uh like he happens to make moves in the stock market uh -huh. and uh, Almost, almost a hundred percent of the time, 
they prove like as soon as like he buys this stock, it like shoots the fuck up. And so like he's he's putting like he's like like a following a rabbit trail, but yeah. it was like I, I think I can't remember if the article said that they met like him and Nancy Pelosi or or that like she was just sh shooting down the rumor, but it's like this big like conspiracy theory on TikTok that like that like follow everything that Nancy Pelosi and uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband like puts money into because it's likely going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I will say that it's not uncommon for politicians to do that. It is illegal if the politicians themselves do it because that's inside trading. But if their husband or spouse or whatever does it, it's not illegal. There's loopholes, yeah. right? So like, um, I'm pretty sure almost everybody in the Senate does it because they have insider knowledge, right? It's but, ridiculous. Uh, it, it's it's so like sh it shouldn't be a thing, but it is. Yeah, I mean we live in a capitalistic society, so like everything's about the money. As Eddie would say, it's all about the money, right, Eddie? I don't Eddie? know what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, oh, money. yeah, but yeah, I mean it's crazy. Like it's in it's it's insane about all that shit and about the stock markets. I, that's why I, I don't know, man. Like sometimes I'm just like, like how's that thing? <laughs> Like if crypto was regulated the way that stocks are, fucking uh, what's it called? Elon, the shit that Elon said on Twitter probably would have gotten arrested, no? I think so, yeah, because he was promoting it, and um, I think that he would still get arrested if they paid him some money to promote it without him disclosing the information. That's what he would get arrested for right now. Um, if it was regulated properly, I think he would be arrested. For just pumping because it technically it's like he's giving financial like because uh like people on twitch or like stock people like they like they have to preface everything that they say like i'm not i'm not a financial advisor like don't like don't do things that i'm saying uh like like everything that i'm saying is is like it's just it's just like they're just saying it you know yeah. like you like because if you take because technically if you take take it as financial advice and they didn't tell you that it's not financial advice you could sue them and say that their financial advice like like fucked you up or something like that or yeah. or it's like a regulatory thing i don't really know the details but i know what i do know is that we are not financial advisors and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and anything we say if anything we are bad financial advisors yeah. <laughs> um what's it called um so like the other day like I put like thirty dollars in Shino Iba, or Ino Shiba, and because I, yeah. I was just really curious, like I was like, "What's the big hype about it?" So I only put thirty dollars. Uh -huh. But next thing I know, like literally two days later, I checked my balance in Coinbase, and it was at two hundred sub. I was like, "What the fuck? What happened?" Like what? Like because like thirty dollars back then was like five million sh Ino Shibas, and then like it just like doubled in value, and I'm just, or like not even double, like quadruple or five times, right? Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, I'm good. And I sold it all, and I just took it. I took my money, and I ran. But uh, potentially, I don't think in the long haul it has any true value. But right now, there's so much hype behind the asset, there might be potential to gain 2x max right now. But yeah, I don't know. But this is not advice. This is not financial advice. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like I, I'm still very confused about this whole thing. Like, like what if like five years down the road, like everybody's like, yeah, fuck crypto, you know, <laughs> like, 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 like all the fucking cryptos go to zero and we've come like, go back to using paper money. Like I could foresee that happening. Yeah. I mean, any, I mean, we live in the real world where anything could happen. Right. I personally feel like crypto is here for the long haul. Like I, I honestly do believe that's the future. Do you but think that it's got to be centralized, though. Do you think that there has to be one crypto? Well, the whole point about crypto is being decentralized and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess so. so. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, it's it so weird. Like, like, uh, do you do you take Shiba? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ob obviously, the, the the staple coin is gonna be bitcoin that's why other like little altcoins are just trying to be like oh we're gonna be the next bitcoin we're gonna take down bitcoin like or ethereum because it's bitcoin ethereum and those are the two big main dogs right and if anyone is able to compete with them which is very plausible because like they're they take forever to transfer because they have high fees and stuff like that like um then that could potentially be like a 
a multi-million dollar like investment you know i don't know but it's crazy i don't it's, know man yeah like i still think it's still <laughs> it's it's not early in the game but still new early you know uh, i don't know if it's early enough it's it's just new like i saw something i saw like one of those like you know those fucking quick youtube flash videos where it was like where they were talking something about the winklevoss twins and yeah. I, I can't remember i can't remember if it was like about nft or if it was about or or if it was about coins but basically like they took the money that they got from the facebook settlement and they put it into I, i'm pretty sure it was bitcoin. like a, a they put it in the bitcoin mm -hmm. and then they catch that and then put it into something else now which is another another big investment like well, okay, they for... they own the Gemini Exchange, don't they? I thought the the don't yeah. they own that? Yeah, they might. I don't know. I, like I said, it was just a fly by night thing. But I was just like, dang, like I could. I, Social Network's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love, so I like uh, I love hearing stories about the Winklevoss twins. <laughs> it, it's crazy because like when I saw that, I was like, all oh, the Winklevoss twins are a bunch of assholes. But then now I'm just like, it was Mark. It was Mark Zuckerberg who was a dickhead, bro. <laughs> Fuck him. Okay, Fuck him, asshole. Uh, if you, you're around long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, uh, what is it? Like like the whole um, from from uh, Karate Kid, the, the fucking, the, the, the Karate Kid, you know, he was the real bully. The, the yeah. Bully. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either either die a hero or live long enough to die a villain or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Have you have you seen Cobra Kai? Have y'all seen Cobra Kai? I haven't seen I've it. I've seen no. like half of the first season. It's pretty cool. It's it like the late like I think the new season's coming out pretty soon. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. Like it, it's it's cheesy and funny. If you like cheesy like like nostalgia kind of kind of shows like the newer like the newer seasons like I don't know it's pretty cool. I I, I just like it because it's like. They don't harp too much on the nostalgia, but they do bring it in here and there. But it's 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 a fun show. Yeah. Yeah. So like next week when the podcast happens again, I'll give you guys an update on because I invested totally like around one thousand or twelve hundred dollars in NFTs right now. So let's see what my profit is for next week. Probably it's gonna be a negative or some shit, I don't know. But um yeah. Oh, for the best. Yeah, hope fingers crossed, right? Um, but in other news, something that recently happened for um, Riot, uh, specifically League of Legends, they recently announced that they're going to be disabling cross chat in their game, which is like, I think, I don't know how I feel about this, honestly, because like cross chatting, like, you, like you can't talk That's to the other enemy all team. All chat, right? Yeah, yeah, all chat. You can't do all chat anymore. Cross chatting is always like really fun. But uh, maybe I'm just toxic. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because, like, tox toxicity in League of Legends, it's just, they go hand in hand, right? And they, for the longest time, they, ever since it's, it's, like, like its beginning, like, it's always been toxic, you know? And they've always had trouble combating that. And now, I guess this is their latest thing, trying to, to prevent people from being toxic. I'm uh, Maybe it'll help, but in the long haul, I don't know. Like, I, I honestly don't know. Think about the last thing you typed in all chat. What 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 do you think it was? GG easy, probably. <laughs> yeah, for me it's probably probably some form of GG or like jungle diff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a fucking tank diff. Tank diff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I guess it, maybe it will help, but like <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it'll help in the long run, but you'll probably just get even more freaking toxic chat from your teammates than you already do. Yeah, a lot of toxic toxicity comes from your own teammate flaming you. Like, they'll be put, the teammates will be in all chat, like, damn, I fucking hate this. Like, can y'all believe this fucking tank we got? Like, fuck. <laughs> like, like, our DPS can't hit for shit. And they're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I feel like. All chat was just could be a mind game too. Like you could because you play actual game and yeah, then you do a mind too. game. So like, I that's what I like doing. And, and whenever I see someone throwing or they're playing bad, sometimes I'll be like, damn, your your character, your your top lane sucks. I feel bad for you guys. And it it makes everyone's morales go down. And then you just sweep them, like you stomp them, right? Even more. So like, I, it, it's I, a mental I game. Say, 
I'm definitely guilty of that. Like I've uh, like if if there is a a player like sometimes like it'll be somebody either it, it, I've done it both ways. Either there's somebody that's good and like you fucking shit on him and it's like, hey, why is this guy throwing? And they're like, <laughs> and they're, looking, they're like, yeah, that guy is throwing. Like, he's throwing. <laughs> why are you throwing? But he's like actually carrying. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, and then, the other way is like you'll shit on the bad player, like bro, like he's just inting, like he's he's just walking right into me, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, like they they or took like, like a report, whole element. So and so for inting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that could be toxic. Considered to be toxic, right? Yeah. But I think it's I think that's more of a mind game thing. And if worst case scenario, you just mute all chat. Like I don't know. So that's but, what they're yeah. doing just permanently permanently right yeah, i don't know yeah yeah i mean to be honest like i like i don't know now that discord is so prevalent i'm never using text chat anymore like if if i'm if i'm going into a game without my friends most of the time i'm not talking to the other people like uh like just being honest and, and if i do talk to the other people it's usually voice comms because i don't really have time to type out a message if i'm typing out a message because either you're not in voice comms or like i'm that mad <laughs> or something like yeah. that well i know for a fact the people that are going to be most affected by this is by the new change is snake or bod I'm and players <laughs> well i was gonna say snake or bod and george <laughs> yang because like they literally only talk in all chat that's all they do in every game they're just like they say stupid shit and i don't know they get away with it but um whenever he's <laughs> on the podcast you have to ask him then you ask him so next time but yeah I like like I said previously, I'm like 50-50. I think this is uh currently I think it's an okay idea. Maybe in the future when we see more results, my my um, opinion will vary. It's good on paper, yeah, honestly. Yeah. What do you I think, mean, Eddie? You won't ever see like it, it is kind of like a weird thing too, because now you won't have any insight into the enemy team. Because sometimes you would get some insight from all chat, like into what's happening on the enemy team they're like like or like some of their traits and personality like you could kind of de de determine that based on like like all chat like either, either like like you'll get those people that are like good luck have fun it's like okay that guy's pretty cool you know like uh or or they'll be like damn like these guys on my team suck like damn he's toxic yeah. like, or, like or the tilted adcs that tell you where their jungler is yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. And that just shows you how toxic League of Legends community is because every game has all chat, but <laughs> League of Legends the only game that's gonna have permanently all chat muted. That's insane. <laughs> like, like I don't know. You don't have this issue in Overwatch, and I think Overwatch is pretty fucking toxic. You know, like they don't yeah, mute all God. chat. And in another freaking Riot game, they don't have that issue. Yeah, either. yeah. Like, yeah. I guess they weren't punishing people long enough because, like, there I know there's chat bans in in League of Legends. But they never, I guess, implemented it properly. So they're just like, you know what? We're just gonna everyone can't chat no more to each other. You know? I don't know. It's fucking weird. I don't know. I'm turning this car around. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's weird. Oh. And then um, the last thing we're gonna be talking about is um, recently um, it was announced the Co Call of Duty's new anti-cheater. So. Anti-cheat thing. Yeah, the yeah, anti cheat anti cheat system called Ricochet. Yeah, so I mean I I would compare it to uh Valorant's what is it called? Vanguard. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's kernel based, so it's gonna be a program that lives on your computer, similar to, to Riot Vanguard, to the to detect cheaters and all that. You know, um overall I think anti cheat is a good thing. Destiny recently implemented Battle Eye um, anti cheat, and Battle the number cool. of lobbies and the number of games where I feel like, damn, that that was really sus, has gone down dramatically. Like I I used to get one of those players probably in every game, and now mm -hmm. I get them maybe like once every session, you know, maybe, and like not even that, you know, it's gone down that much, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of anti-cheat. A lot of people are going to be like, I don't want to install this thing. They're going to fucking take control of my computer. And maybe they will. Who fucking knows? But um, if you want to play their game, that's that's what you got to do. 
And especially for something like a free to play game, like like uh, Warzone and um, and Valorant, like it, the barrier to entry is so minimal that like there's no reason for a person to just not create Another like accounts kind of after accounts yeah. other than like ip ban like yeah. uh, unless they ip banned which they should do that i think, that, I think they do I, I don't know if they do ip bans but yeah i mean it's gonna it's gonna detect all that stuff no technical difficulties you see the big boy chibi there you go <laughs> So what I will say about the whole thing is honestly I don't like it just because the reason why I the reason why I think it works for Riot is because their game's a 20 gig download and they patch like maybe once a month at most for a 1 gig update or whatever. Fucking Call of Duty is like a 120 gig download and they update every 2 weeks for like 20 gigs. I'm just like, I don't want to download, like, update, constantly updating my shit. Like, I don't know. It's just, and then on top of that, you have to download some other thing that I've never heard of. Like, I don't know if it's going to be, is it going to be updating it's constantly? It's proprietary. Like, they mm. made it specifically for Call of Duty. Like, so, the, the Call of Duty devs made it for Call of Duty. I, the only thing I'm thinking is, like, is it going to be updating constantly, like, as well as the game? You know, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. Because it's always different. Like there's always like coming up with twenty gig Wait like a patches. month or two, see how it goes, and if it looks like it's going good, we can probably just play a couple. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I do. I I mean, if you if you go to any streamer's stream that's streaming Warzone, you know how big the cheater problem is. One yeah. cheater like, at least a game. Sometimes you yeah. get two to three. Yeah. And like, and the fact that like they're having to like, like, oh, you got a cheater? Fucking run him over with a truck. Like, <laughs> like you get yeah. fucking, like you have to create strategies to to fight against cheaters, which sucks, which takes away from your whole game and the whole experience. And same thing happened with Destiny. It's like with Destiny, um, they had what was called three peaking, where it's like you would you would go you would do an emote to go in the third person to see if somebody was trying to snipe you around a corner and you would you, you would do that to fight against cheaters because if like they're fucking hard scope there like you gotta fucking know where they're at so that you could dodge them and you're having to fucking make decisions based on cheaters which sucks you should your game should never do that should never yeah. make you do that so that's why like that's why i said i'm always gonna be for anti-cheat yeah well, only I mean, like, I'm also, like, with, I'm always for anti-cheat, but, I mean, I feel like Call of Duty doesn't really do anything to combat cheaters. Hopefully, this will be the first, this is honestly the first stepping stone to combat the whole cheating system. Because, I mean... I'm a proud anti-cheater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just like that um, family guy uh, when Lois was running for, like, mayor, and she just goes to the crowd and she's just like, 9-11 was bad yeah. <laughs> yeah. nine uh? eleven oh <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah hopefully this like hopefully this actually works and like it's not a fucking shit show um i just also don't like the fact there's so many developers maybe i feel like that might affect the coding as well i don't know there's... They probably have one team working on this specifically, like a security team or something like that. Um, I mean, they're they're a big enough fucking company. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, they have so much shit in flight lately. Uh, like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, like with Vanguard. Like, are y'all getting? Are y'all gonna get Vanguard? Probably not. No. Nah, I'll probably just get the next Modern Warfare. Yeah. See, mm. I might like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't There's know, Halo man. and Battlefield coming out. Why the fuck would I get Vanguard? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just yeah. prove that they don't really give a shit. They have fucking cheaters in their beta. Yeah, yeah. I wish, I wish COD multiplayer was free. I feel like, I feel like that, I feel like that should be free at this point. I like, mean, Halo I, multiplayer I would, is free. If the oh. if the multiplayer was free, I would buy the battle pass probably every time. Like, yeah. but but they they know that they can sell a fucking 60 70 dollar game every year so why why stop now you know That's they have true. no reason to stop but halo is gonna have free multiplayer which is gonna be real good real good 
real good. Yeah, I, I think the reason why is because like their parent company is Microsoft. Like, mm -hmm. and Microsoft paving the way for gaming, honestly. That's how I see it. For the past like year and a half, ever since they, they started putting Game Pass on the PC and stuff like that. Yeah. They've always I been paving they, the they way. They said something about an infinite battle pass. I think that, that I think that got leaked this week. Uh, I haven't read too much on it, but but apparently like like an infinite battle pass for Halo got leaked, which would be awesome, like to pay a one time fee for a for a battle pass. Yeah. And you always have them for the rest of the great game's life. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. But I mean like which would make sense because it's like like maybe I don't know, maybe it's a lot of money. Like I'm maybe sure it's like it a fifty, be. sixty dollar thing, but then you get it forever. But then like and then you only get the loot technically if you play the game, right? Yeah. Like if you don't if you don't max out the battle pass, then you won't get the loot. Yeah. I feel I like this I feel like this is a good stopping point for the podcast today. Um tell us what you think of like the new Call of Duty um anti cheat. And what do you guys think about NFTs? Do you see any projects or whatever? So yeah. Um this is a save point, we're signing out. See you guys at the next save point. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye. See you next time.